Hi guys, so I've been playing Kill Team now for, well, over two years. Absolutely love the game. Um, and I have about 30 odd sort of painted Kill Teams. Uh, a variety of ones, obviously Warhammer sort of proper ones, and a variety of 3D printed ones. Obviously my favourites are always Orcs. Not that I ever play the full Commando team because, well, I prefer the six man teams because it's obviously a lot easier <laughs> to, uh, to remember what the operatives do. Um, and generally I print them obviously the same size as they should be. Sometimes I have printed kill teams smaller. Uh, but the great thing about the kill team that I play is just with my mate uh, and we obviously do the rule of cool. So we have a whole variety of miniatures. Don't always have the right sort of uh, gun outlay and all that sort of stuff. Um, if you've seen previous videos, I've got a kill team of Judge Dreads. I've also got a uh, Star Wars kind of themed kill team, Darth Vader and Stormtroopers. Uh, and yeah, we just love messing about with different kind of kill teams. But recently, um, I've started <laughs> printing miniatures out, well, a bit bigger than miniature size. Um, so this is going to be an RC car that I've got coming out. Uh, obviously still working on it. Um, but yeah, this got me thinking, now I've got a studio, I'm in a bigger place, I have a lot more room. Why don't I print out and make an oversized kill team? Um, obviously I have to make two teams to be able to play against each other. And I think that's only what I'm doing in this video. So stick around and find out how big I'm making these miniatures because they're, they're not your typical size, they're a bit bigger. <laughs> anyway, let's crack on, get into it, and I'll show you the miniatures that I'm going to be using for my new oversized kill team. So as always, the first place I go to have a look is Mr. Modulork over at my mini factory. Uh, and as you can see, yeah, awesome amount of orcs he does whole variety of looks and sort of weapon outlay, some vehicles, bits and bobs. But the best thing is they're all modular. So you can mix and match all these beautiful sculpted uh, orcs and make, well, whatever you kind of want, which is just great because I do like making things sort of, well, mine, really. So for my new kill team, yeah, I really like the idea of going for sort of orcs that look like they're in, well, an army. So that's kind of why I've gone for these looking uh, sort of jungle themed ones. Uh, with the old dog tags on them as well, which is great. I uh, just love the look of them. And yeah, so this is what I'm going to make a six-man kill team from. But as you'll soon see, yeah, these are, well, they're a lot bigger than your typical kill team. So I may make a kill team board to fit these, or these will just be used, well, in the living room, in the garden, in large areas. So the first thing to do to obviously make these the size I want, drop them into my slicing software, simply enough. Obviously download the files, drop them over and there they all are looking at, well the size you would print them normally so as you can see yeah get quite a few on this uh, on this plate but I'm gonna supersize it um, and basically I went for a nice sort of round number of 300 and also this was kind of like the largest size I could get one miniature fully on one of these um, these build plates just to make it easier for me yeah one build plate one build uh, one miniature <laughs> but as you can see yeah everything is well, rather large, and only just about fits on this. So this is where it's a case of kind of playing a weird game of Jenga. Um, you've got to move things around, make sure they all fit inside the build plate, and obviously you don't want any red areas, because the red areas basically means, well, that bit's not going to be printed, because it's outside the build plate's area. So, yeah, a little bit of manipulation, moving around, and uh, jiggling about with the um, orientation of things to make them all fit. But, yeah, eventually get there. And yeah, set it off to print, and I think this print was about four hours, which wasn't too bad at all, especially considering the size of this chap. Um, yeah, he is pretty large. So he was printed on the Eligu Saturn IV Ultra, and as you can see, come out perfectly. Absolutely love how he looks. Um, and yeah, the size. Uh, yeah, I do feel like a big kid, I must admit. Uh, miniatures are great, but big miniatures are even better. So I'm using the good old uh, Death Rattle Green matte finish by the Colourforge. I've been using their primer guys for well over a year, absolutely love the stuff as well. It is truly a lovely matte finish um, and just goes on so easy. And just like that he's done. So yeah, two reasons really I've gone for the green. Uh, the main one is I love the colour for, well the actual orc skin and I do want these to sort of be like the army men commando looking. And the other reason, well these aren't going to be slap chopped. Yes, you heard me right, these aren't slap chopped miniatures. Um, something else I've always wanted to do is have a kill team of cell shaded or comic book style painted miniatures. 
So, as these are rather large miniatures, yeah, again, like I've said before, Slap Chop doesn't really work too well on larger, flatter areas. Unless you use an airbrush to paint with, then it's not too bad. But again, it can be quite tricky to do, well, a miniature like this, especially when I've not really used the airbrush that much. I've had it a few years, and I think I've used it three times. So, again, another good reason for doing the old um, comic book style here. Um, and yeah, I, again, I'm, I'm loving the comic book style. I seem to go through stages where I paint a certain way and then paint lots in that way. Uh, and at the moment, yeah, comic book style is something I really do love, <laughs> I enjoy. It is easy enough to do. Uh, obviously, there are better ways you can do it um, to make it look even, well, even better than how I do it. So I would definitely recommend looking at other videos on cell shading and comic book style. Uh, but for me, yeah, what I'm doing, say I enjoy this kind of painting. I love how it looks at the end. So yeah, I just, yeah, love it. Nice and safe, nice and simple. So pretty much every sort of color I do, uh, as you can see, just blocking everything in. So it is, say, it is very simple and easy. It does take quite a bit longer than um, the slap chop style. Not the necessarily the painting bit that I'm doing now, but the, the black lining you'll see coming up a bit later. Yeah, that's the bit that does take a lot of time, but that's also the bit that really does make this look comic book 2D sort of style, which, uh, yeah, I am absolutely loving at the moment. Once you've got him fully sort of painted in the base coats, yeah, then it's the, kind of, this is the trickiest bit, kind of. It is a case of then going around, adding in some sort of like highlighted areas, uh, typically in a lighter version of whatever color it is that's underneath. So if you can see on my desk, you can kind of see I've got quite a lot of paints spread out. So what I've got is obviously in the green, there's two different types of green, obviously the primer green and now a much lighter green. And uh, the same for the browns, I've got two different browns and the greys and everything else. So it is literally a case of, well, in my say, the way I do it, I paint the darker color on first uh, and then go around adding in little, uh, little highlighted areas. Kind of basically trying to do any areas that you think are obviously raised uh, and would catch the lights really. Um, so it's, say this bit always feels weird for me because I'm always say I'm not very good at always working out generally where the light comes from. I know it comes from above, uh, but typically in miniatures, yeah, this is again this is why I love slap chop because that does obviously take everything out of your hands and just does everything for you. Um, but so well, something I have noticed whenever I do this, um, it never looks bad afterwards. So even if I'm not too sure where to paint these bits, just put them here, there, everywhere. Say mainly raised areas. And if what you're going on is kind of like rounded, then make the bits sort of look rounded. If you're doing it on a real flat sort of panel that's with edges, then do it more square looking. Uh, but the main thing, like I always say, have fun. Um, yeah, don't think too hard about it. Don't worry about it. Just have fun. Uh, whatever happens, happens. But honestly, when you come to do this, when you do the black lining at the end, that's what ties it all in together um, and makes it just look, yeah, comic book style 2D. I just want to say a quick thank you to all my lovely patrons for helping support me uh, by sponsoring the uh, the channel and yeah keeping me uh, well keeping me fed. <laughs> so cheers guys much appreciated. So yeah that's him pretty much done and I say now the fun bit of doing the lining. So I'm going to spray him with some matte varnish uh, just because I've had a few problems in the past using these sort of black liner pens. Uh, they say these are permanent and can go on anything but sometimes I don't like going on the paint. So I thought I'd uh, spray the miniature with that varnish and hopefully that will, uh, well, yeah, make things go on a lot easier. Which, in the whole, it did. There's definitely still better uh, better markers or some markers that work well and some that sort of don't work well. So typically, if I can, I like to use the marker more just because I find I have more control over this. Uh, but as you'll see coming up, I will use a paintbrush and some black paint. Um, mainly because there are some areas where, well, I can't quite get the marker to. So, yeah, we use the, uh, the paintbrush. And the other good thing with this sort of thing, it doesn't matter if your lines are a bit messy. If you get thicker lines or thinner lines, that's all fine too. As that all goes to help making this look like, well, like it was drawn with, <laughs> funny enough, a marker pen. Um, so, yes, yeah, so this bit does take the longest out of everything. Uh, it's very enjoyable though, because I, 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 mean, I love painting. For me, I say I do do this full time, but it's not really a job. This is all therapeutic for me. It does sort of make me feel happy. Um, I really enjoy it, um, and yeah. So even doing like the black lining, even though it does take a long time, 
because you have to keep looking over the miniature even when you think you've finished you need to keep checking because there's always going to be another little bit you may have missed uh, but yeah I absolutely love doing this and I say this is where it really does start to make the whole thing look uh, look good so even when you're painting it and you're thinking well this just looks really weird because obviously it's all single colours with then dollops of other lighter colour over the top um, but yeah persevere get to the black uh, mark a bit and everything will come to and look good so say this is obviously the first chap of six and again i do prefer six man or six operative kill teams uh generally because it's easier to keep track of what each operative does i have played the orc commanders before um it's about 11 operatives and they all have different abilities yeah i kind of forget what they do and yeah don't use them to their best ability and there we go that's him pretty much done i've gone around all the edges and little areas here and there with the old black marker pen and the last sort of thing to do um say so he looks great as is the last thing to do though just put a few little hash lines here and there uh these are obviously to help indicate sort of shading and that kind of thing um you can go overboard on this uh, i generally don't do too much of the hash marks um just because again you can't, you can't make it look too messy so typically i'll do these in areas where well, where it's normally larger sort of flatter areas where there isn't too much um and again this just sort of gives it that extra feel of 2d comic book um and yeah and then that's him done so say this is the first of six i can't wait to uh, well crack on with the rest i have printed a few out they're on my desk and the other thing i love about this sort of size as well as obviously it could be very fun to play something rather large um they look great just sitting on desks uh so now i have got more room and i've got obviously more room in a studio um yeah i've got a dedicated area i'm gonna be putting all my sort of painted miniatures um and these guys yeah they're gonna look wonderful there so that's him done so it didn't take too long at all um definitely longer than slap chop but definitely as enjoyable uh and just love how these look i say you take a picture and he does look flat uh which is just great absolutely love him so yeah guys hope you enjoyed the video don't forget to hit that thumbs up button leave some comments down below share wherever possible because that really does help my channel out no end and if you want to see more behind the scenes stuff of what i'm currently working on then yeah consider becoming a patron okay another video on the screen give that a click see more of what i do you guys take care bye for now